and welcome back to Transfer Talk. We're going to be looking at three players who have been linked to us in the media. Uh, Jens Petter Hauger, Daryl DK, and Rafael Santos Bore. Let's have a look now. Should I stay or should I go? So Jens Petter Hauger. Uh, when he was with Bodo Glimt, he and Philip Zinkenagel played uh, in the Europa League, UEFA Cup, against AC Milan. Um, Hauger made a big impression and got his move for 5 million euros, uh, not a great amount to spend, to take him to AC Milan. He has started reasonably well, but he has started to be dwindlingly used in, the, in Serie A, and he's been more used again in the same competition, the Europa League. The interesting dynamic here is that AC Milan are said to be extremely keen on Rodrigo de Paul, who we actually uh, talked about in the first transfer talk. Um, it's believed that the Pozzo family are quite keen on Hauger, having looked at him at the same time that Zinkenagel was, uh, was scouted initially. Um, it's believed that potentially Hauger could be used as a makeweight in a deal to take de Paul to AC Milan, to make him affordable to them. Now, that means that Udinese could end up with three players of a similar ilk. So Roberto Pereira and Della Feu, both of which we know extremely well, play in that sort of left side drift in um, you know, from the left wing position, as does Hauger. Uh, let's have a look at his stats. So looking at Jens Peter Hauger, um, his stats are interesting. His link up passing makes absolute sense. He plays more as a sort of a wide left forward, um, more like a slightly less speedy dynamic Delafeu. Um, if you look at this pattern here, and there are two patterns there, the blue one is him appearing for AC Milan in Serie A, and he's playing very much a sort of a, a left wing position, playing mu very much as a, 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 a link player, not really necessarily quite as dynamic. He scored twice as many goals um, in the European uh, Europa League which are the figures in orange, where he played more as an offensive player, looking to dribble more, looking to get in and shoot, and looking to basically be a bit more combative. And his stats in the year preceding this were just berserk. Um, he is a very, very good player. Um, certainly one who would, I would suggest, give uh, Ken Semmer a real run for his money and give the opposition right back a real other question if he were playing in that left wing um, uh, position. I think Hauger's a really interesting player and I think he could give us the X factor that we've missed uh, without having somebody like De La Feo on the on the, the, the counter side to Saar. How likely it is? There's a lot of pieces in the chain that have to uh, to be completed before he might actually be able to come to us but I'm gonna say probably about 25% here. It makes sense. The Potsos will want to realise something in terms of the value of DePaul because he's 28, he's going to start depreciating soon. Hauger is a much younger player and could be longer term, really somebody to cash in on. We'll see. It's Daryl DK. He's from the US. He has a physicality to him that can only be described as American collegiate sport. He is a unit. He is six foot two and he has great upper build which allows him to play as a centre forward um, it really allows him to, to, to hold off the opposition centre backs be able to turn with the ball and play the one thing we think might be an issue with this guy is whether or not he would be a good link player if you play with a single central striker um, his tendency is to get the ball and as I mentioned turn and barrel towards goal in a, in a powerful way that really kind of is, is a nightmare for centre backs to try to deal with the question would be, could he get the ball, could he receive it, and then bring in others into play, such as Semmer down the left and Saar on the right, and whoever also is brought in to, uh, uh, to play this season. Um, that's going to be the question. So we'll just take a look at his stats and see what we think. Daryl DK's stats are split between playing in the English second division, the championship for Barnsley, and playing in the US in the MLS for Orlando City, which he did uh, prior to his loan to Barnsley. Um, shown in blue, we can see that having gone to Barnsley, he's had to work harder at recovering a moving ball. So he's basically quite apt and adept at shutting down the opposition. And aerial duels and how uh, how much he 
can uh, be combative in the air is clearly a trait that's very solid with him. He uses his six foot two, very solid. His dribbling is is good, but it's really a forceful driving with the ball rather than a skillful dribble. And he's used that to good effect in the States, less so um, as Barnsley have been more of a passing team rather than just giving the ball and letting him career forward. Um, but he looks a real solid handful. When we look at his uh, goals to games ratio, um, he scored a total of 17 goals in a combined total across Orlando and Barnsley of 3,013 minutes. That gives him a goal every 177 minutes. So that's just under um, a goal every other game, which as we've mentioned before, is the high watermark that we're really looking to you know, try to achieve. Barnsley didn't take up the option that they had to make it permanent because of course they didn't make it to the Premier League. Uh, the rumor is that it was $20 million to sign him permanently and they would have of course had to have won the playoffs to have done that which means it falls to the potsos to take a look and think what might he do what might we do i'd say 35 to 40 percent fingers crossed i really like him and i think he could be the long-term um long-term replacement for troy Deeney. so rafael santos bore somebody we've been linked with since well pretty much since the day we got promoted it is rumoured that Bore has already agreed to sign with a Premier League club, quote unquote, not one of the big clubs, uh, and therefore he was immediately linked with Watford. He is a fox in the box style of player. He's only five foot nine, but he's got an intelligent piece of movement in small areas and spaces. His movement is probably akin to Matty Vidra in terms of being able to drop a little bit deeper and then knowing when to when to when to drive forward. He hasn't quite got the ballistic pace that Vidra had when we first had him, but he really is uh, an intelligent player in terms of how he positions his body and the problems that he causes for opposition defenders. Let's have a look at his stats. Now, in terms of Rafael Santos Bore, uh, we have chosen to take a look at his stats based on the year 2019 to 2020, he was injured quite a bit this year. He's only played 328 minutes in total um, this year. So it's not really fair to take a look at his stats on that basis. My concern with Bore um, isn't the quality of the player. You don't get to play at uh, River Plate and play in the Copa Libertadores final to, you know, a couple of times. Um, without being a decent player. My concern is that in any one season so far, he has not exceeded 1,350 minutes in a season. That means he is missing over half of the games by way of injury. Um, he is available on a free transfer, so he may well be considered to be a good risk at a low salary base in comparison to European players. He did come over previously about six years ago. He was bought by Atletico Madrid and then he was farmed out to Villarreal. Things didn't really go the way he wanted and therefore he went back to his home in South America. He's actually Colombian, but he went to River Plate in Argentina, where he is very well considered and is part of Marcus Gallardo's uh, team most certainly but he is going to be leaving this close season so we'll watch this space and see what might happen it is certainly the kind of move that uh, the Potsos are known for because it could potentially bring value and they're not adverse to bringing in somebody who's had some injury issues getting all over them with the medical department sorting it out and then really you know, really realizing somebody's potential um, if it worked out it could pay off big from them from that point of view Bore, I'm going to say 50%. Um, we have been linked with him very strongly. Um, it all went quiet um, because we were linked with him literally when we went up and it went quiet after about 10 days. Unsurprising because Bore came down with coronavirus in Argentina. Not the best news, obviously, but he's a free transfer. They will be looking at him as a potential low risk option with real potential quality um, in terms of coming in. So I would suggest that he's the kind of player that the Pozzo's would certainly be looking to go for. Um, we'll see. Watch this space. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to click the like button. Um, and if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. We're going to be doing this more and more. And it'd be great to have you here along. We really appreciate you watching. Um, take care. See you soon.